Okay, I'm going to go over one more example of the inverse square law. So what you have here is, says the exposure at 6 feet is 90 rims. What is the exposure at 11 feet? So you want to think about a campfire. Here's the campfire. Here's the guy standing close to the campfire. And you want to look at the two distances. 6 feet is the first distance. 11 feet is the second distance. So this means the person gets further away with the second distance. So if you think about this campfire, here, maybe it's kind of hot standing right here, but if he moves over more, now he's 11 feet, then we know it's not going to be as hot. So it's the same thing with exposure to radiation. If you're 6 feet from it, you're going to get more exposure than you would if you're 11 feet away. So we know our answer when we do this should be less than 90 rims. It should be something below that because they're further away. So what you want to do is your three numbers in here, label them in the problem. Okay, we have, uh, for example, the formula is I1 over I2 is equal to D2 squared over D1 squared. So 6 feet is D1, that's the first distance. 11 feet is D2. The 90 is I1. And we're always going to be figuring out I2. That's the one we're always going to try to determine what it is. So you want to use those three numbers in this formula to find your missing answer. All right, so this is the formula I1 over I2 is equal to D2 squared over D1 squared. So we want to put in our numbers into this formula. So I1 is 90. And it's going to be over X because we don't know what I2 is. That's the one that we're going to figure out. Make sure you put the second distance on top. D2, which is 11 feet, that goes on top and it's squared. And D1, which is 6 feet, goes on bottom. Squared. Okay? Now remember, squared means 11 times 11, not 11 times 2. Or it means 6 times 6, not 6 times 2. So when we do that, what we have is 90 over X equals 11 squared over 6 squared. So in the calculator, you can just put 11 times 11. That equals 121. So what we're saying is this right here, 11 times 11 is 121. 6 times 6 is 36. Now the next thing to do is cross multiply. You're going to take the top number here times the bottom number there, and this top number times that bottom number. So we're basically saying 90 times 36 and 121 times x. So with the calculator, 90 times 36 equals 3,240. that's equal to 121 times x. So the last thing you need to do is figure out what x is. So pretty much what we have I'm going to put up here. Three thousand two hundred and forty is equal to 121 x you divide by the number with the x on both sides. So divide by 121 here and here. This cancels out, and that's going to tell you what x equals. So with what we're doing is taking 3,240 divided by 121. Make sure you put this number in the calculator first, and then divide by that one. So 3,240 
divided by 121 equals 26.78. And the answer is rims. So that's how you figure out what your new exposure is. And since they got further away, it is smaller, so we know we're probably pretty close to the correct answer when we do that. Okay, now we're on the uh, second week worth of notes here for x-ray. And if you look on page one, it talks a little bit about the x-ray film. So here we have a piece of x-ray film. Now, what you want to remember, this film is very sensitive to the light. So you need to leave this film in the dark room until you put it into your x-ray cassette, which we'll look at in just a minute. This film has some different components to it. In the notes, it tells you there that the x-ray film is made out of base and emulsion. Okay, the base is just this sheet of plastic. And what they do on each side is they spread out this gel-like substance called emulsion. And it has silver, it's made out of silver. It's, um, they're actually called silver halide crystals, okay, on each side. And then there's like a, a clear membrane around that or a clear layer around that just to protect it. The silver is what produces the image on the x-ray film. Okay, in other words, if we take an x-ray of your hand, you're going to see white bones, and then everything else around it is black. Okay, and that's because when the x-ray beam passes through the film, um, the x-ray beam gets blocked by your bones. So the silver that's under my fingers and under my hands move away towards the x-ray beam as it passes through my fingers. So it's like that old uh, toy you used to buy where it, um, it would have like a picture of a guy in a face and all the black stuff at the bottom, those little black pieces of dust and use the magnet to pull it up towards his face to make like a little beard. I just saw one the other day in the store. It's like a dollar. So it's kind of the same thing. The silver will move. It, it's going to go to wherever the x-ray beam hits. So if you had a small x-ray field, about half the size of this, this film, and that x-ray beam hits there, all of this around here, the silver is going to get attracted to it like a magnet. So after we take our x-ray, you'll see a border all the way around here that's clear. Then you'll see a black square, and then inside you'll see the white bones, because all the silver gets attracted like a magnet towards that beam of x-ray. So you have your base and emulsion. All right, and this goes into this right here, the cassette. It's called a cassette or a film holder. Okay, so you open it up. So you're gonna do this in the dark room. In the dark room, you're only gonna have a red light. You know, just like you've seen on TV when someone is developing their own film or their own pictures and they're in that dark room and there's a red light shining. Okay, that's the only light that you should have on. So you'll go into the dark room, you'll open this up, take a piece of film, put it in there, and you should hear it click to close. Alright, inside here, you have these white uh, plastic sheets on each side called intensifying screens. Alright, when the x-ray beam passes through this cassette, it's going to cause these screens to glow. They're going to glow either blue or green. Okay? And it's like a, it's just like a green flash of light is what it is or a blue flash of light. And that that helps to put the image on the film. All right? So these are your intensifying screens and this is your film. Right here you have an area, a piece of lead right here. This is going to protect the corner of your film from the radiation so that you can put the patient information up in this area after you take the x-ray. Alright, there's different sizes of film on the bottom of page one of the notes. It just gives you some examples of the different sizes listed here for the different types of film, like 14 by 7, 11 by 14, 10 by 12. You probably memorize those numbers okay, as the different sizes of film that we use. 